Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after having taken a long trek through our nearest translocator over there, and we went out in search of Chert. And boy, did we find some. Kind of as a surprise after I bunkered down for the night. But we now have access to these three... Oh, I did just do that, didn't I? But we now have access to these three very fine, put you there, types of stone, and they are going to work very well for today's build. And today's build is one that has been requested a few times by a couple viewers, and that is that we are going to be getting into some winemaking, some ale brewing, some distilling, some cider making, and some mead making, all in one episode. Just kidding, it's going to be two. But I want to put the distillery up here. And I want to get a little fun with this because I think that putting just a production facility up here would be kind of boring. I mean, let's put it this way. We have guests up. Sure, we can serve them in our house, but I mean, we don't have a table yet in the dining room, so moot point. But what if, what if we had a restaurant attached to our distillery? At least here where I live, there are a lot of places where there are wineries or breweries and so on that have restaurants out front. And so you can go and eat and sample their drinks and get really trashed and then get arrested on the way home and have a good time. Except for the arrest part. So to that end, we should probably get started with harvesting some berries because that is going to be the first thing that we will need for making wine. We'll need to harvest our trees to get some apples and some pears for cider. And we're going to need to mix up some flour and water for our beer. And then we'll get started on the materials and the machines that we need to get this process started. Let's get to it. have collected all the fruit that was growing on Lupine Ridge, and I did make a quick jaunt over to the nearby pink apple tree in the woods, and got a few more apples there. Let's see what we got. In this vessel, I have all of our apples and pears, so we got two and three quarter stacks of both red and pink apples, and almost two stacks of yellow apples, and four, almost five stacks of pears. So I think we're going to become known for our pear cider here on Lupine Ridge, and then somewhere... Ah, over here, I have some spillover storage from our rye and rice flour, but I have all of our berries, which is almost three stacks each of the red and black currants. We have most of a stack of white currants, almost a stack of cranberries, and a stack and a half of cherries. These were from the trees, and they're about to go bad, so we'll want to use them real soon. Now, in order to process these into wine, we first need to get the juice out of them. So, to do that, we need to make a fruit press. That is going to require a few tools and a few copper bars. I don't want to make just one fruit press because that would be slow. We're going to make three. And I believe that requires three copper bars, one for each press. Each fruit press also requires a bunch of boards, one piece of fat, two resin, and a hammer and chisel, which we have both of right over here. Let's get our fat. We've got plenty of fat. There we are, and six of these. There we go. So, all we should need to do is put them into our crafting grid like so. 
and there we get a fruit press. And each fruit press will pull three from each of these stacks of boards. So one, two, and three. There we go. And for now, our fruit presses are going to go right here in the project corner of the basement. I don't really need access to those chests back there at the moment. And you'll see that what we'll do is we'll put the fruit in here, we will work the press, and then juice comes out the bottom. But wait, that's just gonna run down the floor. Well, of course, we need buckets. Let's get some buckets. We have one, two, and three. And now when we press our fruit, we will get the juice straight in the bucket. Let's go do that with a couple of these. So let's start with the pears. Now the fruit presses can accept between 16 and 32 pieces of fruit, and it must be in increments of four. And there we go, we're full up. So once it's full, we can, oops, uh, we have to right click the top part of the actual press. There we go. And you'll see at the top there that it is starting the press. It takes a little bit for the juices to all come out. And it counts down. And eventually we should get 10 liters, but I know there has been a bug in Vintage Story where it doesn't quite get all the way to 10. Yep, there we go. 9.89 liters. Now that's not uncommon. And the way around that is to press only, I believe it's 16 at a time, rather than the full 32 that will fit in here. Let's go ahead and we'll get the mash out. Now this mash really doesn't do anything for you. The only thing you can do for it is you can either store it in a chest to turn into rot, or you can feed it to pigs, although the other animals won't touch it. There you go. Enjoy, guys. So in order to fix this issue, I think what I'm going to do is... Oh, that drinks one liter at a time. So in order to fix this, I'll be putting this into a barrel, like that one, and we'll just keep pressing, but doing 16 at a time, until we have 50 in there, and then I'll just drink the rest. So, here goes. All right, now pardon me while I drink this nearly five liters of pear juice. Whoa. I feel like I'm sloshing around. My pancreas will hate me later. So we're gonna do the same thing with the black currants and the red currants. And we're gonna take that juice and put it into the barrels right in our room over here. And then we'll talk about what to do next. Lesson learned, folks. Always do 16. Don't be clever, because you'll only get it in increments of 0.2 liters. So you can't make 7.5 liters of juice, but you can make 7.4. Juice. Mmm, juice. Oh, juice. Mm, yeah. So much juice. Also, I'm seeing that the mash often doesn't stack. I don't know why that is, but I'm not a wild fan. I don't know if I can split these and restack them. Do I... Nope, they do not stack for some reason. So that seems like a bit of a bug, but I know right where this mash can go. Off into the void with you. Goodbye. See you later. Mm-hmm. Nice knowing you. Hey, get... Whatever. Why game? Why? 4.9 liters, but I put 16 berries in. But this one's got five. What is this nonsense? Guess I'll be drinking even more juice now. And none of you stacked. Ugh. Save me. And now we have one, two, three, and three hips barrels of juice. I did go ahead and squeeze out the cherries. And we have 50 liters of pear juice, 50 of red currant juice, 
50 of blackcurrant and 30 of cherry. And you'll notice up at the top it says fresh for 26.6 days. It's interesting to see how it sort of normalizes the spoil timers for all of these. And it's much longer than the original berries, but also much shorter than the original pears. So I found that interesting. Now, what do we do with these? Well, first of all, we have one more type of alcohol to make before we seal them all up. And it's a good thing I happen to have over here one more rye flour than I need. We're going to go ahead and fill up another barrel with water. And we're going to do 50 liters of water. There we go. And into that water, we're going to put 50 rye flour. And you'll see here that it will turn into 10 liters of rye ale after 14 days of sealing. Now that is a 5 to 1 reduction, but if we look at these guys, each of these will turn into the same amount of wine, or in this case cider, as we have juice. So we'll get notably less ale out of this than we will get wine. But what we do next is all we do is just seal all of these up. So 7 days, 7 days, 7 days, 7 days, and 14 days. And we also have these two barrels full of honey. I have been saving this up for a very long time. And we're going to take one of these and we will also seal this up. And you see that it will turn into 50 liters of mead after 14 days of sealing. And there we go. And now it's pretty much just a waiting game. And that gives us time to do some other tasks. Namely, building our distillery slash winery slash brewery slash restaurant. Let's get to it. Okay, first things first, we need a product bin. Boop, right there. And then let's go ahead and start filling this with some of the materials that we're bringing. And we have a second load, because I couldn't carry it all the first time. Now you'll notice, if you saw the last episode, that I omitted the clay stone, and that's because we don't have any. So I'm going to take a long trek up to our far north translocator, and cross the other side and start digging some clay stone. And also, I need to get some more lead because we need to light the place up. And while we do have a few other lighting options, I do want to keep using lanterns. And I want some more lead for more of these Melibdu Chalco's lanterns. And I know there are a couple places of lead that I found up that direction. So, I'm gonna go get to that and I will bring it all back and we will start on this build as soon as I return. Okay, and since I didn't feel like unloading inventories again, I just brought along a box full of stuff, and there we go. So, I want to go ahead and start laying out what this build's going to look like, and unfortunately I think that means that this water may have to go. So I don't want to cram it up against the barn. No one wants to be eating their dinner and hearing, you know, the pigs snorting and the sheep farting and whatever else they do in there. So I think I do want to bring this probably right over here. So 
I'm going to level this out a bit. So, let's get to work. And with the power of the Holy Trinity, that is editing, a trunk full of dirt, and about a thousand shovel worth of durability, I present to you our canvas. This is where we are going to put our distillery, brewery, thingy, everything, Swiss Army knife of alcohol. I've brought along sort of three colors of dirt, if you will. I've got bony soil and packed dirt and some strewn straw. And I'm going to use these to lay out what I'd like our place to look like. Now, I'd kind of actually like to make this a two block wide walkway here because I want to have a double door. And I think having a double door off of a single block path might just look funny. And in fact, I might even move this maybe down to like here just a little bit because it'll look funny if I have it coming off of this directly opposite of the greenhouse, but having a two block wide path rather than a one block wide path. So let's move you down just like here. There's a start. I don't think we'll be too close to the animals still, so we should be good. And then let's come out. Let's see. We'll come down a little bit and we'll come out to maybe. Oops, not there. Are you far enough? Maybe. It's a maybe. Or I could set you back a little farther. Maybe just a couple blocks. Yes, we'll start there. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying this out a bit. And I'm going to play with it for probably a little while. And I'll bring you back and show you what I come up with. Okay, everyone. I spent a few minutes laying some ideas out and straightening a few things out and thinking about how I want this build to come together. So let's take a look together. So I've kind of used these different dirt blocks to designate approximate boundaries for different sections. The bony soil blocks inside here is where I want to have the distillery part of our build. Those of you who are familiar with the boiler and condenser in Vigil Story will know that I don't need this much room. And that's because this is going to be a mostly decorative room. But we'll get to that. But this is where our distillery will be. I'm thinking that here will be the entrance to our little restaurant distillery place. So we'll have the doors here, and we'll have an awkward little sitting room, like restaurants tend to, with an uncomfortable bench to make customers who are waiting for a while want to just leave instead of clogging up the restaurant even more. I'm thinking that over here we'll have like a little annoyingly close to the door claustrophobic concierge desk, like you often find in restaurants, where they have, you know, someone waiting for you right here, and they take your name and reservation, and then hand you off to a server over here, who will take you either to your indoor seating, which will be up in this room over here, and I want to bring this room up by like a block or so, and maybe have like a raised bar area over here, or your server may take you through these doors out into the outdoor seating area, which will be out here. And we'll have an entrance direct to the bar right here for refills and for ease of service. Now right here, I want to have a small fireplace. We'll actually have two. We'll have one outdoor for ambiance and one indoor for warmth. So that patrons who are in here in the winter can stay warm and out in the summer we can have light and whatever outside, you know, the smell of wood smoke or whatever. And right here, of course, will be the entrance to our distillery area. And I might even put a window from here in the waiting room into the distillery area so that customers can, you know, watch the processes going on and admire, you know, our operations. We will have a back door here and I will probably pull this road out or bring it out and connect it up so that the road comes what right by about here. It's going to cut it kind of close, but that's okay. And then we'll have an entrance right in here. And then down here, we will have our wine cellar and our brewery in a space that's going to be about one, two, three, four, five, six blocks by about 12 blocks. It's going to match the size approximately of this whole area up in here. I may chop it down if I decide that that's sort of too much room, or I might just fill it with clutter and decorations and more barrels than we need. Now you'll notice that I didn't 
set these blocks, these corner blocks, in line with each other. And that's because I want to play a bit with some roof lines and some building designs. And I kind of want the building to look not like it was slapped together, but more that whoever built it was being creative and was having fun with the build. Not unlike sort of a modern restaurant build. So we'll have like a really tall tower here above the waiting room with maybe like a light hanging down from the ceiling. And then the distillery will have a decently high roof. And it might be, I don't know, like a, a shallow slant. And then this area over here, where the eatery part is, I guess it's over here, might be, oh, I don't know, maybe a flat roof or maybe a higher peaked roof. I'm kind of leaning toward a flat roof so you can sort of see the peak of the distillery from back here. So we have here all the materials that we need, or I hope we have all of them, that we will need in order to put this build together. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, everyone, it is status report time. Let's go take a look at our alcohol, see how it's doing. And here we go. So we have the first set of our wine and cider done, and perry, which is the pear cider. We still have a few days for the mead and the ale. But you know what? While we're here, why don't we sample some of this? Who's going to know? So for sampling, we're going to need to have a bowl. And we could use a jug, but our jug is way up on the hill, and it's probably full of rainwater by now. So let's go ahead and we're going to try some of this cherry cider. Bottoms up! Ooh. That's not... That's not too bad, although the room's uh, kind of starting to spin a bit. You know what? I could go for another. Ooh, and that's, that's really good. Let's have a couple more. And you'll see, the more you drink, the woozier your view becomes. Not unlike when you are very badly wounded and your view starts sort of spinning about. And it's kind of hard to control now, actually. 
can't quite walk in a straight line anymore. And clunk off the wall. Let's try putting this away back in our chest. Oh boy. Woo! Sorry to anybody who has any motion sickness issues. This is going to be a bit of a ride, I think. Okay, so that lasted about two minutes of real time. Not too bad. Amusing. Not terribly useful. Oh, and, um... Yeah, so our redwood grew again. And... It's that tall. It, It's barely taller than the pines. It's actually smaller than the first one. I am, um... Kind of disappointed, not gonna lie. Because that means we're gonna have to chop this down and grow a third one here. And I was hoping not to. Now, we do have the one growing over here. So we'll see in about a day and change how tall this one is. And depending on how many seeds I have left, I think I have one left, we may end up having to harvest this one. Just for the seeds, not the wood. So, progress on the build, though. Here we go. Here is what I have so far. I've got about half of the walls done, at least halfway up. And I'm already seeing some things I want to not necessarily change, but add for calling this done. Is that, especially along here, right above this sort of first block, both on the claystone end brick and the chert end brick, is I want to have like a little line of some kind of wood. I'm thinking probably walnut, just to sort of make a belt for this little dividing line, because here it's not particularly stark, and here it's almost too stark. So I think having a nice, you know, grounding, earthy colored belt will help. But let's go into the front door and talk about how one would experience this place. So you'd come in, and you'd have some kind of bench right here, and here is a window into the distillery. And I opted for the thicker paned glass, because I figured that here we'd have some kind of safety glass, or at least thicker glass, that someone trying to steal our secrets couldn't just, you know, take a glass cutter to and get into our distillery and steal our recipes. Then, once you have been called, you can come up to the concierge desk here and, you know, make a reservation or claim a reservation. And I'm starting with the bald cypress planks, but I want to put on some kind of trim. I'm thinking either walnut or redwood trim around the edges, and I will be using the chisel to smooth out these corners. You don't want this corner to sort of, you know, you don't want to heimlich yourself on this thing. And this is sort of the, the purposeful choke point. You want the concierge here to be able to sort of stop people and give them sort of a, a visual, you know, you don't come past this point until you pay the toll kind of thing. But once you get past here, you have either the indoor seating up there or the outdoor seating out here. And I have a... This will be a sun cover. I kind of want to poke some holes in this and make it so that it doesn't block rain, it'll just be for sunny days, but it will be for shade on those sunny days. And I've already done a little bit of chisel work here, just getting this sort of post in, attached to the claystone cobblestone support. And unfortunately, in this version of the game, these fences aren't going to attach to these chisel blocks. My understanding is that in 1.17, these should attach, although I may have to break and replace the fences to get them to recognize that the block is there. Then I have filled out some of our fireplace, and again, this will all get chiseled later in the next episode. Uh, this is the outdoor fireplace, and then inside we have the indoor fireplace, with a real fire. Check it out. We have here... I haven't decided what this is yet, but I'm thinking this is sort of like the, the busing station. You know, like the sort of place where all the waiters hang out when they're not, you know, being the host. And they can come here, and they can, I don't know, check people out. As in, like, you know, payment checkout and they can bring the dirty glasses here and whatever, and they have this place. And again, this will get the same kind of trim work as that. Up here, we have a raised bar, and I want to put a couple bar stools right here along this uh, this row here. And I may actually, may turn this one into a bar stool seat as well. And the access way will be back here. I'll probably put a little trap door here so that the bartender can open and close it and have just a little separation. And there will be a wall right here. And then we have the stairs down to the kitchen. I've decided that the kitchen will be a basement kitchen. 
and we'll split this area between the brewery winery and the kitchen over here because this is just like a really big space I don't want to fill all this with barrels because that's a lot of wood but then up here we have what is the start of our indoor seating we'll have a couple booths here I'm thinking a neat little corner booth could go here and then one more half booth here and we'll have room for maybe a couple small tables in the middle maybe one of here and here or maybe just one right in the center here and then of course we will have our distillery right here and along this wall will go our stills eventually that'll be in the next episode though and i've put a few windows in notably one right here a couple there and then one over here and here flanking this door and that's kind of on purpose this is meant to be sort of a relatively dark little public place pub like not public and so like the bartender doesn't really need to see out the back and he's got more use for shelves overhead anyway so he doesn't need much in the way of windows and with this wall here there won't be much of a point in windows on this side here and i figured only the patrons are going to need really any light so we have light where they're going to eat we have light in the places they're going to walk and everywhere else is not lit from outside it'll be dimly lit to sort of just signify like hey if you're not an employee you shouldn't be here anyway i'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these walls in and then i'm going to slap some roofs on these building sections and we'll see what it looks like
and it is the morning that our main construction is complete. Let's take a look at what we've got. We have a very short redwood, and I noticed that over here... Don't look yet. Don't look. We have the redwood that I wanted over there. Look at this thing. Look at it. Wouldn't this be perfect right in the middle of our little roundabout? But no, we got it over here. I have one more seed. I'm going to chop this one down at some point and plant that new seed, although we won't really get a new tree till next year. And if that seed fails, then we'll defoliate that tree and try again. But onto our build over here. Onto our distillery. Here is the main building. As far as the sort of bulk construction goes, I was working primarily with getting the walls and floors and ceilings in, all the basics, and in the next episode we'll go through and do a big detail editing pass while we're waiting for our distillery to work. Let's take a tour. So, you already saw some of this. We have the sort of entry foyer in here. Oh, and I need to put a bit of floor in there. Possibly some red blocks, I don't know. And then we have our main eatery and fireplace and bar right in here. And I need to build a little wall here, or maybe even just a partition with some fences. Could be nice too. And in here, I did put a floor in the distillery. I was thinking that the aged floor might actually go really well in here because, you know, we're going to have a lot of fluids moving around through pipes and stuff. And so this floor might be like mildewy and a little bit half rotted. And so I thought that the aged wood would work really well here in that regard. So I went with it. I have some wood framing for the roof this time from the beginning. And then I also have these sort of nice cross beams with the pale bald cypress slabs for the ceiling in here. And there is no second floor. It is just a single floor. And then in the basement, I have timber framed walls and ceiling. Same bald cypress slabs for the ceiling. And I pushed all of this claystone cobble back by half of a block. Again, using full blocks rather than the slabs because the slab verticals have that sort of funny crunch texture at the top. And then over here we have a little partition into what will be the kitchen. And I'm thinking we can maybe even dig these walls out a bit and put the sort of cook section right over here and have a couple little chimneys coming out the side of the building at the base there. But this will be where our kitchen is, so we can have a little bit of food storage, maybe some firewood down here. And then the service people will be able to bring the food up the stairs and to the patrons over here. Or outdoors, as it were. And I did finish this off out here. We have a lot of wolves. I've been trying to find this wolf the past couple days. But we have a lot of little weird sort of joins to fix up in here in the next episode. So I'll probably bring the pine slabs out an extra half block right in here, just using the chisel. And that way it'll just patch up these weird little spaces that shouldn't be here. There are a lot of them, and I'm not going to get to them this episode. I also want to trim down the trim, get it, around these windows so that we'll have half of this brick slab will be brick, and the other half will be sandstone rock. I kind of like the sort of, I don't know, like, like Tex-Mex look to it. I kind of enjoy that a lot. It's sort of almost Pueblo-inspired, or almost American-Mexican eatery, if you think of, I don't know, like a some kind of American restaurant that's sort of inspired by, you know, Tex-Mex food, and we did our worst in trying to emulate it. So, I kind of like the look, though. It feels kind of faux Mediterranean to me, with this whole, like, outdoor eatery and the different interesting roof lines out here, so I think it fits well what I'm going for. I might actually raise the walls on this and bring the roof up a little bit, and maybe even add a little bit more overhang to the roofs, just on this tower thing, just because it looks a little stumpy right now. I want it to stick out over top of the distillery roof. I also played with the roof lines a bit. I have the sort of barn style roof over the distillery. I have a very gentle slope over here that's not quite as tall as the distillery roof. And then over here we have the flat roof from the 
outside pergola. That's the word I was looking for. And then the box roof on the tower. So I think those are all kind of fun to play with and work together. Oh, and then they're sort of hard to see, but still there, barn-style roof over the hallway inside the restaurant. I also jutted the fireplace chimney up a little bit. It was kind of even with the tip of the roof here, so I added a few more blocks to it. And all in all, I think this is coming together pretty well. I'm looking forward to what we'll do next episode, including things like adding some trim under here to make it look like these beams are better supported, that kind of thing. But that will all be for the next episode. All that detail work is not happening today. But what is happening is we have some Booza Hall to go check on. And here we go. 50 liters of mead and 10 liters of rye ale and then all of our cider and wine and our peri, pear cider. So as you can see, this has changed the spoil timers. Now these four, I think, started at about the same 53-ish days as these two did, but you'll notice that while the honey doesn't spoil, once you convert it to mead, it does spoil eventually. So we'll have to either drink it and totter our way around the estate for a while, or we can run it through a distillery. And that is what we'll start next episode, with at least some of these. But these all have the same effect as the cherry cider. They just, I guess, taste different. This one tastes purple, this one tastes gray, this one tastes red, this one tastes yellow and so on. Anyway, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed our little adventure in putting together this distillery, restaurant, brewery, winery combo mix. And I hope you're looking forward to detailing it in the next episode and getting our still working. If you have an AMA stock question you'd like me to answer in a video like this one, leave it in the comment with the hashtag 20 questions. And if you play video games and would like to support the channel, Consider using my partner link next time you're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now, and in the description below. As always, my name has been Corazar, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.